Hello and welcome to Property Box News, I'm Simon Evison. If you remember last week's show, we talked about rents in Scotland and the slowdown in increases and in some regions, the drop in rental levels. In a new report, there are predictions that rent and house prices across Scotland are likely to rise significantly over the next five years. According to property consultancy JLL, the supply and demand imbalance is expected to drive up rents, with JLL forecasting that by 2021, tenants will pay 20% more to rent property in Edinburgh and 17% more in Glasgow. And home prices in Edinburgh will surge by almost a quarter, almost double the UK average and 4% more than London. In Glasgow, where many properties cost less, a 15.4% rise in the corresponding period is forecast, ahead of the average increase in Scotland of 10.9%. In recognition of this shortage, the Scottish Government recently announced a revamp of the planning system in an effort to simplify the process and speed up building of new homes. Key changes include zoning more land for housing, promoting self-build and removing the need to apply for planning permission for more types of development. The consultation will also seek opinions on new rights for communities to produce their own plans for their local area. Ultimately, the proposals put forward will support economic growth, delivery of houses and increase community involvement in planning decisions, according to a Scottish Government spokesperson. Interestingly, JLL offered a suggestion for the housing shortage across the UK earlier in January. They stated that thousands of new properties could be built on car parks in Britain without losing vital parking facilities. Around 400,000 new homes could be built on 10,500 surface car parks around the country, providing homes to around 1 million people. Nick Whitten of JLL observed that policies for car-free urban centres are getting more and more common and that technological advancements could see the demand for urban parking fall. The government has said it is looking for innovative solutions to the housing shortage. Maybe this could be one of them. If you have any opinions on the housing shortage north of the border or indeed across the UK, your comments would be gratefully received. Let us know in the comments box below or contact us directly. Details at the end of the show. In figures published by the HMRC, it appears that stamp duty has raised twice as much as expected in nine months than was predicted for the first year, with £1.19 billion raised since April and a predicted £1.58 billion by the end of this tax year. The RLA has called on Chancellor Philip Hammond to abolish the upcoming changes in mortgage interest relief and use the windfall stamp duty income. One RLA survey has found that 58% of landlords are considering reducing investment in their rental properties because of the changes, and 66% feel the tax changes will place upwards pressure on market rents. The RLA believes the government should pause the start of the introduction from April to enable a better assessment to be undertaken of the likely impact of the policy. RLA Policy Director David Smith said, In raising nearly twice as much in just nine months as the tax was predicted to make in one year, this stamp duty windfall gives the government a chance to back the rental market and support the development of new homes which we desperately need. He went on to say, At no stage has evidence been published to support this assertion that landlords are taxed more favourably than homeowners or that they are squeezing first-time buyers out of the market. He finished off by saying the government has received far more money than it expected. We urge them to use this to support the country's tenants and undertake a fuller impact assessment of a policy that has the potential to cause untold damage to the rental market. Let us know how you will be affected in the usual way in the comments below. And finally, this week I met with Legacy Education Alliance CEO Anthony Humpage to discuss property investing, owning gold and the war on cash. Here is a sneak preview. For those who have yet to get started, what do you think are the key success factors that people should be um, employing when they first get started as an investor? Well, Simon, if we're talking about investing in property, hmm. I think one's more important than any anything else, and that is getting your first deal done. Now, doesn't mean we should be reckless in doing that, but getting that first deal done to me is probably the most important thing 
a beginning investor can do because it builds momentum, confidence, a lot's learned in the closure of that first deal. Uh, it's just so important to get that done. You can see the full interview in our new program, Property Box, face to face, out soon. And in the coming months, we will have further interviews with other property professionals and experts. If you would like to comment on any of today's items, use the comments section below, post on the Property Box Facebook page, or email directly to propertyboxatlegacyea.com. That's all from me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. A fifteen four fifteen bucket.